<laughs> Hello guys. Um, today I'm going to. Uh, my name is Jenny. Uh, I'm one of the Algo TA this semester, and uh, for all of those who have been to my office hour, this is what I look like without a mask. <laughs> okay. So today I'm going to briefly talk about how to analyze runtime for divide and conquer questions. It, it can be very confusing at the beginning, but hopefully this video will help you through how to analyze those runtimes um in detail. Um, so the general workflow here uh, of writing divide and conquer algorithm is, is something like this. So first you want to divide the original problem into X pieces of subproblems with equal size. So notice how I emphasize that the subproblems have to be equal sizes. So it doesn't really make sense to divide them into different sizes. Um, so for example, we have merge source, right? You, you want to sort this uh, array. You, so you want to like divide them into half and half, right? Instead of maybe you have some one element, divide them like one half, like one side you only have one element and the other have all the others. It doesn't, doesn't really make sense here. So you do want to divide them into equal sizes. And I believe if you don't do so, well, at least I don't know how to analyze the runtime if you don't divide them into equal sizes, but it's going to become clear in a second. Um, so also next step is similar to DP. Um, we solve the subproblems recursively, and then finally we combine the results um, to get a final solution. So um, something to keep in mind is that uh, sometimes when we're dividing the problem into subproblems, um, this doesn't have to be constant time. So you also have to include this part of the com uh, complexity into your uh, like runtime analysis. And also the combining step, uh, or you can call it conquer step if you want to, they can have very different runtimes, which depends on the problems themselves. Um, so for example, sometimes we might just need to compare the values from subproblems. Um, or it's just off one, right? And then, but if like the subproblems output arrays and we want to pick like a maximum value, um, this can take off n. So it's it's pretty flexible here. And I'll talk about how to solve those runtime in general, like for all cases. And here is like some code uh, about merge sort here, which you might find it familiar because I put it from, like I get it from Java hypertext. <laughs> okay. So here's like um, a general form uh, of the equation for the runtime. Um, the idea is that if the runtime for size n subproblem, a problem is T of n, uh, then the runtime for a subloom, subproblems with size n over p here um, should just be T of n over p because we're using the same algorithm. So it should be the same. And um, the o, o of combined part here contains the time that we divide the subproblem um, and also like combine the results. So uh, it's kind of, it, just as I said, uh, it's pretty different from question to question. So I just put some arbitrary O of combine here instead of like put off O of N. So because it can be different. So um, just to like repeat, Q is the number of subproblems we divide. Um, and then P is the reciprocal of the size of each subproblem. Uh, it can be confusing here because it's kind of a weird form, uh, but it really doesn't matter here. I don't, I don't like write out what is P, what is Q when I'm doing the wrong time. So it's, it should be fine. Um, and then notice how this is not the final runtime because we want something in the form of O, o of, I don't know, whatever, N log N, whatever. Um, but this thing is not. So we have to solve this equation to get the final runtime. And this is uh, one example, also merge sort here. Um, notice how we divide the subproblem um, into like n over two, so p is two here, um, and also we have two subproblems, so q is also two. And in the last step, because we are like merging them together, it takes off n. So this thing actually gives um t of n is smaller to q. Yeah, and then this is um this is like how you write the equation for uh, some algorithm like this. Okay, so there's something um really convenient called master theorem. Um, I only put um this three equation here, um because uh, the general form is pretty messy. Um, but so if you have like combined time that has O of n, you can use these three equations. Um, 
we, we will talk about like general cases later but this is like if you want to i don't know remember something sure um so the three cases gonna be uh q smaller than p which gives you uh, o of n time and also p equals to q gives you n log n which is the same case we have merge stored here because remember we have p equals to q equals to two right and then just give you n log n um and the last case is q greater than p which gives you this weird thing here um this is the same case of integer multiplication where we have three sub problems and then each time we divide the size into half um yeah and then you can plug it into the equation and check whether uh, it's the same in the lectures um and also credit to pete and sanjay because um uh, i stole the equations from their slides last semester um there's also a link of formal proof of like a general master theorem that works for all the runtime i believe so i can also put the link um, later okay so um this is how we generally analyzing any divide and conquer runtime it's called the unrolling method uh, so basically the idea is that we divide problems into smaller problems until we hit the size of one which is base cases and then because we have runtime for all those different levels, um, the like the final runtime we actually want to calculate is we have to add them all up and then calculate the total runtime for size and problems. Um, so then the first question becomes, how many levels do I have here? Or, or you can say, what's the depth of this tree here? So to calculate the, the size of each sub problem, um, you kind of follow this trend. So like, um, the first level you got the n here and then the second level you times one like two over three and then next one you times like another two over three there so for like arbitrary level um this is like the uh, kind of equation to calculate the size of the sub problem so um at the end let's say just called level k um so k is just n times two over three to the k right and then we want this thing to equals to one which if you do the calculation, it gives you k equals to log three over two n. Um, and then more generally, if you have um a or b n as the size of the subproblems, um, then we just get k equals to log b over a n. Um, also just as a side note, you always want subproblems to be smaller than the original problem. So please don't write something like the subproblem size is two n or something. It doesn't make sense. Um yeah uh but notice how this only relates to the size of the subproblem so it has nothing to do with how many subproblems you divide them into so just imagine if you if you always divide um some problem into size n well you can have this case or it doesn't matter like you're just putting more subproblems here it just never stops right so it doesn't matter so this thing won't stop and then this thing also won't stop and then also similarly, if I just adding more to n over three nodes here, um, it still has like level k because it's all gonna uh, get to size one at like those levels. Yeah. So the the depth of this tree is uh, only related to the size of the subproblem. Okay. Um. Now this is the equation like given to us. Um. And then this is kind of like how you um draw the tree from this equation. So it's basically saying, oh, each time we divide the original problem into three subproblems, um, and then each one has a size two n over three. Yep. And then the combined step has uh, n cube time. Um, I, I wrote them in two form, like one in n, one in x, because I feel like n sometimes can be confusing because you keep thinking about like the original n. Um, uh, but then if you just use x instead, you can treat it just like a function. Um, yeah. Um uh so similar to dp we because we assume uh, we get all the correct result from sub problems and then so the runtime like the runtime for those sub problems will be included um in their levels instead of like the the total level maybe level zero there so for each level we would for each level we only need to consider the runtime for like that particular level uh, which is the total runtime for the combined step. Um, so like first level here is just O of n cube because we assume we get the result from like those subproblems already. 
So um, then we want to move on to the next level. Now we have three subproblems, and then each one is has a two and over three size. And then notice how the runtime here should be three times two and two and over three totally cubed instead of just two over three and then times n cubed. Um, they're pretty different here. And then why the former one is correct is because basically x is two n over three, right? And then if we plug this thing into this equation, the two over three also gets cubed. Um, yeah, this is very uh, important because it's gonna mess up the analysis if you don't do so. Uh, but yeah, if uh, if we just keep doing this and then the, I guess the general formula for like any arbitrary level, it's gonna be like three to the i, two to the three i, something like this for like any arbitrary levels, you can just plug in the i. Yeah, so I guess the most important thing is here, uh, you do want to like, um, treat them as like a whole instead of just a random constant factor out there. Okay, so finally, it's the last step. It's time to add them all up. So we get some equation like this. Um, this is just um equation we get from the last slides, right? Um, you want to sum them all up. Um, and then that's why, that's kind of why we have to find the k in the first step because that's the total step we want to add them together. Um, those are just simplification. And then this step, um, you can just pull up the n cube because it doesn't change with k. So basically it's a constant to this equation. Um, and then now you may ask, what, what, what am I supposed to do with this term here? Um, so I wrote it in a more general form here, which is the sum of all the stuff r to the k. And this also has three cases. So you have to remember those three formulas, but hopefully, I'll go through the intuition so you don't really need to memorize those stuff. Um, yeah, so we only have to think about this term and R has three cases, right? It's equal to one or smaller than one or greater to one. If this thing is equal to one, then basically you are just summing over like K once, right? If you expand this, it's basically like one plus one plus one and plus one and there's total of K stuff. So it's O of K. Um, and then if it is smaller than one, which is this case, uh, since we're like adding a total of k terms, and then obviously it's smaller than or equal to, you add infinity terms there, right? And then this is just geometric theory, uh, which gives this formula, and then it goes eventually goes to of one. Um, and then the last case uh, is r is greater than one. This is the case where you got some weird equations like x into the something log something um but then uh i put like how you get this equation here so you can just check it yourself and i think it should be like it's just simple like manipulations around the terms so but anyways if you go through those you can get this equation here um uh, which is smaller than r to the k plus one and it is bounded by o of rk or r to the k and come back to our um, original equation because r is, in this case, r is eight over nine, which is smaller than one. And then so this whole term becomes O of one. And then combined with the n cube term here, we got the final runtime is O of n cube. Yeah. Uh, I think this is what I said is pretty important to uh, remember like this term here is also like, oh, sorry, like this term here, is calculated properly because otherwise like the, the R term is going to be messed up. Um, and I'm pretty sure if you don't, um, like if you just times, if you just use like two over three um, times N cube in the previous slides, you actually will get into the third cases, which is, is pretty wrong. Okay. Um, that's basically how I analyze runtime. It should work for um, general questions. But there's also something called the substitution method, um, which I won't go into detail because uh, it just the textbook just explained better than me. Um, but the general idea is that if the runtime that we guessed is true, then it must satisfy the equation. And then we just plug in that value and see whether we guessed it correctly. Um, but I know it sounds really weird. It's like, what am I doing here? But it just um it's basically just induction because we assume like previously it are also like correct. Um so one example you may already see in class 
is that we bound the total number of comparisons. Um, so instead of using log n, we can just say it's at most 4n. It's probably like a different bound there, but I think I believe 4n is like the tightest bound. Yeah, but if you're interested in that, please feel free to read more on the textbook. Um, and that is all of the runtime stuff I want to share. I hope this is helpful. Um, and yeah, good luck with everyone's homework this uh, this week. Yeah, see ya.